Minnesota may have made one of the biggest mistakes in NBA history, and that mistake is probably fairly obvious. It's obviously talking about the Rudy Gobert trade, and at the time, it was kind of on the fence. A lot of people knew he, they probably gave up too much, but a lot of people probably didn't know that it wouldn't work as much as it had. Now, I know you have to give things time, but with how they've looked through their first few games, it has not looked good at all for the Timberwolves. And then it just, the package they gave up is also looking very, very bad. And the trade details are getting worse and worse as you go back and look at them. And for you that don't remember, the trade details and everything was the Utah Jazz got Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, Walker Kessler, Jarrett Vanderbilt, four first round picks and a 2026 pick swap while all the Minnesota Timberwolves got in return was Rudy Gobert and yes Rudy Gobert is a very very good player and the reason the Minnesota Timberwolves did this is because they felt that they were just one piece away from being able to contend and that makes sense because they already had a up-and-coming superstar in their eyes in Anthony Edwards a very good center in Carl Anthony Towns and then just probably an all-star level player in D'Angelo Russell who's a very solid scorer so they figured add an elite rim protector elite rebounder this team could be very very good and in theory yes it kind of makes sense but now that we have seen it for the first few games it really doesn't look very good at all because they got rid of what kind of made them good what made the Minnesota Timberwolves so good last year was that they played with an edge and like an energy that you really couldn't match and the players that they traded away were a big part for how that culture and how that edge and energy always came as Patrick Beverly is one of the most high energy high effort veterans you will find in the NBA and he was a great veteran leader for this team and he got them to play hard and got them to play with energy and got them to just have a lot of fun and then Jarrett Vanderbilt's another guy a very high energy high very good defender he couldn't score that good but he would always give a hundred percent effort and we're seeing that with Utah as Jarrett Vanderbilt continues to play like that and Patrick Beverly is continuing to play like that on the Lakers but you trade away two players that contribute to that culture so much and then even Malik Beasley is a very high energy kind of spark type of guy off of the bench and when you get rid of three guys like that that greatly impact your culture you're gonna lose a lot of that edge that you once played with especially when you trade it in return for Rudy Gobert who's probably one of the most mild guys on the court you can find so you went from having that edge and what made you good high energy kind of gritty type team to a more probably calm more calm minded team that isn't going to play with that high of energy and we have seen that as Carl Anthony Towns hasn't looked the same Anthony Edwards hasn't looked the same Rudy Gobert has pretty much looked the exact same even D'Angelo Russell is not playing as good the team has nowhere near the edge it used to have the grittiness is completely gone and the Timberwolves just do not look good with how they're currently set up and to make things even worse Walker Kessler who was involved in that trade because he was a rookie that they traded away after drafting him is basically doing what Rudy Gobert does and is one of the better backup centers so far in the league especially as a rookie as Walker Kessler is a very good shot blocker a very good rebounder and is just all around a very lengthy tall guy to lock and be an anchor in your paint and that is exactly what they wanted in Rudy Gobert so they basically traded tons of draft capital tons of very valuable players to their team for a older version of what they got in this year's draft and this trade just doesn't look very good at all and not even from that standpoint anymore they don't play the same they don't have the same energy they used to and they kind of had to change how they play they just don't work together very well because like I said in theory having someone like D'Angelo Russell a very good scorer and Anthony Edwards a very good scorer comparing that with two elite bigs you can have a very good front court back court combo but that's in theory and that just hasn't worked out as Carl Anthony Towns has proven that he just cannot keep up with power forwards he's not fast enough he might be trying but I mean his foul trouble has been insane he's fouled out of two games this year already he's just struggling a lot to keep up with power forwards and we knew Carl Anthony Towns wasn't a good defender but it is really getting exposed how bad of a defender he is and Rudy Gobert although he's still blocking shots and doing all that he's not going to help your offense and we've seen when they kind of are on the same floor at the same time Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy it really just hasn't been working out and then if you take Rudy Gobert and let only Cat work Cat plays a lot better but the defense falls off of a cliff but the offense looks very good and then if you will put Rudy Gobert in and take Cat out the defense looks really good but the offense falls off of a cliff and a lot of that can be put on blame of guys like Anthony Edwards who has not taken the jump that a lot of people expected him to be able to take and he hasn't looked like the superstar that a lot of people expected him to look like and also D'Angelo Russell has taken a step back so I do think with time those two guys are going to get more comfortable and get better 
But how much better they can get and how long it takes, I don't know. And I think that the Timberwolves could be looking at a very, very scary future as one of those first round picks they gave up was in like 2029 and no telling how awful they could be or how good or bad they're going to be at that time because this team isn't going to be the same by 2029, obviously. They've given up their entire future, they pretty much everything in their future for a chance to try to contend right now. And they're currently just not winning games. They are not looking great. And that contending status, even if they make the playoffs, is not very good right now. And it doesn't even look like they have a contending window because I don't know if they have the talent to do so or if they're even good enough to be able to do that, even if they work at a, the highest level they possibly can. So... With that being said, I want to hear what you guys think. Do y'all think that the uh, Timberwolves, how, where do you think their peak is? Do you think they'll make the playoffs? I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like me, point the like button, subscribe button, and the absolute world to me. And I hope you have a blessed day, because I have a blessed day. So you need to have a blessed day. All glory to God. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Boo. Blah.